Good afternoon everybody, my name is Tomislav Golubovic and welcome to the next video in my series on doing a Plant 3D project inside uh, Plant 3D and obviously the AEC collections. Um, what we've done so far, we've done a couple of PNIDs, we've looked at some catalogues and specs um, and now we're going to uh, have a look at doing some structural modeling because last week we we did some equipment um, and now that we've uh, basically gone through and and completed that equipment um, we're going to go through and do um, our structural model and then obviously at some point uh, we'll, we'll um, uh, you're moving on to doing our piping uh, and then eventually um, we're going to have a, a complete project which we'll, we'll take into Navisworks and even maybe have a bit of a tweak um, with some of the other packages. Uh, today, uh, like I said, is going to be purely uh, structural. So we're going to have a look at making a structural model inside plant. Uh, and then we're even going to have a look at quickly doing that inside advanced steel uh, as it is part of the collections. Now, if you're so inclined, you can start the plant structural model inside Plant 3D. Um, if you don't want to, you don't have to, you can start it in advanced steel and then we can import that project in uh, and then basically treat advanced steel as the default package for Plant 3D. Um, it, there is a little bit of, um, uh, there is a couple of rules to follow, I guess you could say. Um, but you know, if you follow those rules then everything should be okay. So what we're gonna have a look at uh, under my Plant 3D, directory I'm going to create a new folder here and call it structural uh, I'm obviously leaving it under um, the normal path now because I'm going to do two different packages in here I'm going to create another subfolder under here and I'm going to call one plant 3d uh, and I'm going to do another one called advanced steel okay so I'm just going to start my structure inside um, the Plant 3D side of things first. So it will just be area one, uh, and I like to use STR as a short form for structure, and then number 1000, uh, leave my name as default, and then click on OK. So it's all pretty easy. Um, there's nothing really, I guess, special to it. If you can model in 3D like you have done the equipment and eventually the piping, you can do the structure as well. So the structure elements are not in the normal plant ribbon. You have to click over to the structural ribbon and we get all of our uh, options here. So just quickly to have a look at some of the buttons. Uh, member, obviously just creating member, a grid, which is how we're gonna start our model today. Placing railings, stairs, plate, footings, and ladders. Uh, footings, I also sort of maybe cheat a little bit and create slabs out of footings. So essentially, rather than being 300 by 300 maybe for a footing, I make them 25 meters by 25 meters. It still calls it a footing, but it, it's basically drawn as concrete items. Shape model in the pull down just denotes how the model is going to look. So I can go through that a little bit later just to show you. And the settings is just that exactly for the settings. Now under the member settings, we get a list of uh, shape standards. Now by default, if you're re viewing this from Australia, AS is not included uh, in the default installer to install other structural catalogs. So other than the AISC, the CISC and the DIN, you need to go back to the plant exchange shore. So that is at the top right of the screen, click on the little shopping cart, which takes you to the app store. And you'll have to sign into your Autodesk account and it'll take you straight to the app store. And then from that, we can have a look at the different uh, options here. So you can go to the catalogs and specs uh, and then you'll see in here we start seeing some structural catalogs as we scroll through. So for the Australian ones it'll just come up as AS structural 
So here's the ASNZ Structural Steel Sections Content Pack. So there is a JIS Steel Content Pack as well. So if you click on it, it'll tell you obviously for what it is and any other uh, information on the document, um, what gets included, uh, all the other options and uh, the button to download. Usually with these there's an installer, so when you download it, double click the installer, it'll get installed into Plant 3D and then you'll see it inside your member settings here as AS. So um, I've by default I've got some AS uh, Universal Beams 310 UV46s uh, and you can obviously uh, adjust the orientation and the insertion point, any material standards, codes, all that kind of stuff. Uh, any offsets in horizontal and vertical if you're so inclined, but I'm just for the time being not going to bother with that. Um, moving along the ribbon, editing the structure, exploding the structure into individual elements. I have never really done that, so I've just left them as, as uh, structural objects. A little bit of cutting uh, tools, so lengthening them, cutting them back, mitering the corners, extending, trimming, or even aligning some edges. Visibility, so again, just turning things on and off. Uh, and something we're going to cover today is the XML export to advanced steel. So just to kick off things, I can place a grid and I can just give it a name. So mine's called grid one. I've got different values for each axis uh, and the names. I'm going to place them just by my UCS and then click on create. So you can see here we have um, our grid. Obviously all of our values are there in place and then we can start placing elements. So I click on member and to go back into the settings, I type S for settings and it takes me into my list. So I want some universal columns here. So I'll just give them the biggest size I, I can. And I'm just going to go from end point to end point for my columns. And that's it. So now that we have that one in there, you can see it's colored. It's just on layer zero. Um, you can go through and obviously change the layers. Now to copy them around, I'm just going to go from end to end on every other column. And there we have it. So to place some footings on the bottom just to make them look a little bit nice. Again, S for settings. So we've got 450 by 450 by 9. Fine for this exercise. So end. And then do the same thing, just copy from endpoint to endpoint to end to end to end and to end. And then lastly, we can do our beams. So same thing, member, switch to UBs. Uh, and let's go to 310s and place insertion point in the middle, top middle. So I want, actually want to break these up between each of the columns. So I'm just going to keep going to each end point or intersection point of my grids. And then I'm going to copy this one from end to end here. And then we can copy this up. So select each one individually. Go to the end point of the grid to the other end point of the grid and there's our basic pipe rack to start off with. So I'm just going to save the file. Now before we jump into the next part where we're going to export it, I'm just going to have advanced steel load in the background first. Now let's say within the organization you're working with, you might have a group of steel detailers on the other side of the office, the floor, another level in the building, and they want to start detailing this up. Um, rather than having them remodel and redraw everything, we can export this out as a XML file into advanced steel. So I can click on the export to advanced steel button. And my output file is just going to be something I'm going to put on the desktop. So I'm going to do plants plant 3D structure and click save. Select objects and I'm going to type in all. So it's going to select everything in here, the grids, 
and 21 objects were selected and we click export. So while that's exported, we've got advanced steel loaded. So I'm just going to start a new drawing. And then within advanced steel, if you click on the export import tab up here, there's all different import export options. So you can just click on advanced export and you get the pull down for advanced import. So I go to my desktop, look for the XML file, open it. Now, it depends if you've done this before. If you haven't done it before, you're going to get this dialog box here to select the mapping from the plant uh, database name to the advanced steel name. So this is a 310 UB 46.2. So we go Australian UB and 310 46.2. So that maps the advanced uh, the plant's name to the advanced steel name and I go OK and then there it is. So you can see from the plant side it's brought in the grid and the columns and everything else. Now let's say we want to use this in plant 3D so I'm just going to do save as first and put it on my desktop as plant AS structure indicating that there's a plant advanced steel structure saved to my desktop. Close the file, go back to plant 3D, select your advanced steel folder, right click on it, copy drawing to project, look for the plant structure and go OK. Now what that is going to do is now bring in my advanced steel model into plant. We can't edit it in plant. So under advanced steel now we go open. Go to the directory where my um, project is, is being done. Structure, advanced steel, and then there it is. So now we're working on the plant structural model in advanced steel that is referenced, that is imported to my plant directory here. So I'm just going to show you quickly just a couple of things that we're going to do here. So I'm going to bring over my connection styles. I'm going to do a quick shear plate connection. Again, very basic. I'm, I'm not going to get into too much on the depths of um, advanced still yet but I'm going to do two by three bolted connections uh, and then what we can do with these is turn around and copy them uh, one by one or just do them all in a group so I'm going to do that one in a group and then copy it to this column and this column to this beam and this beam so now we've got them copied all around there. So now when I save this, close advanced steel, jump back into plant and open it and have a look. And there you can see it's all in here. So even inside plant 3D, we can hover over it. We can even look at the properties and all the information from advanced steel comes through. Under the plant side of things, with the railings, so railings if we want to nominate a start point, so I can start clicking on some some snaps here. So I go from endpoint to endpoint, and there you can see we've got some hand railing. It's not detail as detailed as the advanced steel hand railing, but it's just really there for us to get an idea on what the hand rail is going to look like. So we can adjust some values here, but we're not really too concerned with the hand rail in this as we're going to be finishing off this project eventually in advanced steel, so it'll be a lot more detailed. Now, I mentioned before about this shape model button. So if I switch to line, it just really uh, drops everything down to basic lines. Um, so you can see that uh, it's a bit lighter. Symbol model just takes it to basic symbols. Outlines is just the outlines. And then shape model is the full shapes and curves and everything. So uh, that's 
how we can adjust the, the visibility on this. If I wanted to trim things, so you can see if I wanted to miter some corners here. So I know these overlap, but just for the sake of showing you how to miter, so we pick one, uh, pick the second one, you can see that it tidies up these corners here. If we want to trim things back, and you can see we can trim those back, and do the same for this one. You can see it trims it back to the extents of that. So we can go through and start tidying the models up a little bit. Um, so I'll keep working on this and in uh, two weeks or so I will have a completed equipment model for my area and a completed structural model and then we can start doing a little bit of uh, piping from our PNIDs into a 3D model. So thanks for watching. If there's any questions or comments please put them uh, down below. Otherwise uh, I'll put up another video in a couple of weeks. Thanks a lot.